in hopes that other people will get involved too. We now want to have that discussion on the recent Amazon rainforest fires and the effects it has to the fight against climate change. And joining me in studio is Godfrey Onyango, who is an environmental scientist, Justice and Environment Foundation NGO member, a lead expert with NEMA and a member of Environmental Institute of Kenya and researcher. Thank you very much for joining us. You're a, mem you're a man with many hearts. Very true. And first of all, thank you very much for welcoming me in your studio. Thank okay. you. Um, so let's start with this uh, recent fires in the Amazon. It has been termed as an international crisis. For it to be termed as an international crisis, it means it's very valuable to the entire global. So how exactly is it important? Well, uh, thank you very much for that question. Um, yes. I can uh, say it's a crisis, and going by what Mr. Leonardo has said, yeah. he's depressed. I agree with him. Even myself, I feel the same as an environmentalist. Yeah. First of all, the globe itself is one big ecosystem. And as it is one big ecosystem, we all derive benefits from it. Hmm. And also we have to give back to it. That is why you find that in, in this situation, Amazon produces about 20% of the oxygen we breathe in the globe. Mm -hmm. Not only that, we have also Congo, we have Indonesia, those sites, we have up Fiji and all that, and all of them are in equatorial region. So um, I do resonate with that. We have a crisis. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the different places that you've stayed. You've talked about um, Amazon, Indonesia, there's Fiji, and even in Africa, uh, we have DRC. Congo. Cong yes, Congo, yes. we have Angola. Um, Angola, even Angola, there isn't, uh, yes, there's some pockets of forest, but I can't compare to those which I've talked about. Mm -hmm. Yes. And most of these fires um, yes. that we are seeing are human. You know, most of, it, most of them humans are the ones that started them. It might be accidentally, it might be intentionally, but humans are the most primary um, cause of most of these fires. So mm -hmm. then, are we hurting our own selves as the human race? Um, we are hurting ourselves. Yeah. That's very true. Because, you know, first of all, you have to accept one thing. The population of the world is growing. For example, in Kenya, if I just take Kenya, for example, if I don't talk about the rest of the globe, we are growing at the rate of one million per year. Mm -hmm. That means pressure on the environmental resources, and it's happening elsewhere in the, in, the, in the globe. And you'll find that in places like Amazon, DRC, Congo, and others, people go to this forest to harvest timber, firewood, and all that. Government may try to restrict, but because of the need, mm -hmm. And because of the poverty level, people go there to harvest those things. And when they harvest them, maybe by accident somebody cut the tree, left the leaves, and then they dry, and then maybe somebody's smoking, then you find that fire just set up like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so then where is Africa in the fight against climate change from your point of view as an environmentalist? Well, I have to say that, uh, let me start from global perspective. Mm -hmm. Kenya is a signatory, or Africa is a signatory to some of these uh, treaties, which try to combat desertification and climate change. And um, the problem we have, first of all, is that um, we have issues with resources, financial resources, so that resources are allocated to combat this, this problem. But before we go to that, we have issues with the laws. Like, for example, in Kenya, we just enacted the new constitution in 2010. Okay? Yes. Which also give a lot of impetus on the issue of, of climate. We have Article 42, Article 69, which, for example, Article 42, it gives us the right to have a clean and healthy environment. And the same with 69. And now, you find that Kenya is also signatory to these issues of, um, issue of climate change. And that is why you find that in 2016, Climate Change Act was formed, mm -hmm. okay? When it was formed, you'll find that it was supposed to help to address these challenges. But at the moment, I can say we are not doing that. Why am I saying so? Mm -hmm. The act is there since 2016. Have we moved uh, beyond that? I have to say no. Because uh, you'll find that in that act, it gives room for the formation of Climate Change Council, the highest organ for dealing with the issue of uh, climate change. Mm -hmm. the, chair of that council is the president. The 
the deputy uh, chair of that is the deputy, uh, uh, the, the, the deputy president. And then it has a member from um, Cabinet Secretary Environment, Cabinet Secretary Ministry of Environment, no, no, Ministry of Energy, Cabinet Secretary Treasury, Cabinet Secretary Economics and Planning. All these people, they're supposed to touch to all sectors of the economy, okay? Such that you find that when this is come, it's supposed, one of the reasons why it's supposed to be there is to build resilience and to plan in such a way that what we do, we are not harming the environment. And then we look at it in such a way that we are not impacting the future generation and ourselves. Okay. Yes. So what exactly is hindering the policy changes, not even from a, um, um, a level, a higher level, a governmental level, but even just for a common monarchy level from us? Um, I would say everything should start at the top. Okay. My question is this. We have the Act, Climate Change Act 2016. We don't have the council. We don't have the policy direction. Mm -hmm. Now everybody will just do as they wish. And that is why we are hurting ourselves. You know, human beings are the biggest danger to the environment. Like if you're talking about Amazon forest, this is a place with a lot of, with a good number of biodiversity. All these things are gone. You have talked about certain rare, uh, uh, animals. Dealers, yes. yes, they are not there. They are all gone. Not far from us, Congo here. Hmm. Even we are getting timber from Congo to Kenya here. And if 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 if, if you check at that place, we have these mountain gorillas. People, they are now beginning to to disappear. And with the time, very soon we'll be telling our kids. There are once upon a time there used to be an elephant. Once upon a time there used to be mountain gorillas. So in, in my view, let us not blame the fires on uh, climate change. It is us, the human being. We are not giving focus to the environment. We are not providing enough resources. If we have enacted this act in 2016, and up to date, we don't hear anything about it. I may give you a good example. Mm -hmm. In Mount Forest now, this is a place which attracts a lot of controversies. Mount Forest is a very important ecosystem in this country, not only in this country, going to Lake Basin region, then going to Nile Basin up to Egypt, okay? Mm -hmm. And that place, we are affecting the whole ecosystem up to that place. Now, if we cannot enact, I mean, if we cannot follow to operationalize this act, then I can say the government has failed. There are an impediment. Now, let me go back to the issue of Mao. Yes. You want to evict people. Yes, it's good, because you want to conserve the ecosystem. But the challenge I'm throwing to them, the council, which is supposed, which is in this document, where is the council? Hmm. I've never heard, because I always follow the news. I'm waiting to hear the council is there. The people are appointed in the secretariat. As far as I'm concerned, there's nothing going on. OK, so then even as and, and we now, wait, And yes. now as you're evicting people from Mao Forest, which is a good idea, you are basing it on what? If there are no mechanism in place to, to come, come up with resilience to settle these people, you know, there must be law in place. <laughs> and that is this. Because when you want to restore Mao Forest, you, it must be backed by law. Okay? Yes. Yes. So even as um, we wait for the implementation of that act, yes. you and I can do something about climate change. What are those things that we can do to help ourselves? Okay, one of the things which you can do, first of all, I, I would say education is important. We educate the people that there's climate change. Climate change is a reality in this country. We are seeing the way the, there's erratic pattern of rainfall. You can see one area there's bumper harvest, the other side people are starving, people are dying, yeah? and all that. Kid. So what can be done, me and look at it from the policy level, before, you, before it, it cascades downwards. Once there's good policy, then definitely something will be done. Mm -hmm. Then also, I want to, to, to talk about this. Researchers, researchers have been done a lot about climate change. It's not new. Researchers also need to share their, their findings. Because why am I saying this? A lot of research are there, but they are published in certain journals which are not accessible to the common man. Okay. Yes. Even they're not accessible to any person who may want to use it. And in a language which somebody can use it in a better way. Hmm. Because now if you put it in a journal, you go and uh, 
Google the journal, you find that you need, it needs password. And also they want to make money out of it. Okay. So you find that there's a problem here, there are researchers here, there are policy makers here. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the researchers are here. I'm also challenging the, the, the researchers. They need to come out of the cocoon and bring out their findings outside there. Let the people understand what is affecting them, okay? Because somebody who is fighting to be in Mao Forest may not understand that it's affecting somebody downstream. Okay? You are here, you yeah. can tell us, you can tell our viewers, what, how is climate change affecting them? Climate change, first of all, if you look at it from a global, okay. How is it affecting them is this way. First of all, there'll be issue of food security. If the climate changes, you cannot know the season when you're going to plant your crop. There'll be change in weather. Uh, the, the, the temperatures will increase. For example, when you're cutting those trees on one hand, and you know these trees are supposed to be the carbon sink, which are supposed to remove the carbon dioxide and give you oxygen. In other words, they're like the lungs, eh? which give us the oxygen to breathe. Now, you as a person, you'll find that um, you'll not get clean air. And that's why you get the sick, you get the sickness, okay? So, one of the media houses about two weeks ago, they gave some expo expose about how we're polluting our rivers from Kiambu up to Sabaki in, in the coast, okay? Mm -hmm. That was a very good research. And it exposed the rot and what is going on and the weaknesses in our institutions, yeah, which need to be corrected. Okay? And for example now, Nema yesterday made an arrest, okay? For it's those still ongoing actually. Which is ongoing. Yes. But the question, arrest is not enough. They have the MCA Act 2014 which has been revised, okay? Which even classify the, the environmental uh, crimes, pollution, all that. What they should be telling us, not only seeing in the newspaper that we have arrested this number of people we are going to arrange them in court. That is not enough. They should, whatever the arrest they're doing should be backed with evidence. You have taken the pictures, you have done the water analysis, you have done the soil analysis, you have talked to the communities there, because we know environmental impact assessments were done there, and all these things can be taken to court. When it's taken to court, you build a watertight case. Mm -hmm. And when you build a watertight case, this will be enough for the conviction. But when you you, you create loopholes, you, you, you just go arrest, which I don't know if they have evidence. If you have evidence and you take it to court, the, guy will, the people will be convicted okay. and they will be serving as a good lesson. Okay, so now that we know how climate change affects us, let's yes. go back to the initial question, which is what can you and I do? As I go home, as I live my day-to-day -day life, what can I do to prevent this? Uh, what, what, what we can do at individual level, first of all, I would encourage Kenyans to plant trees. <laughs> Live responsibly. Know that there's tomorrow, okay? Okay, this issue of um, you as a person wanting to fragment the land, because one of the things is that we are turning all agricultural land or all forests into brick and mortar, okay? And this is going to affect us in the future. <laughs> so that should be there. And then the scientists and us, particularly all the people, we should join hands. Because as one person, you cannot do it. But they should come together, policymakers, researchers, the people. In other words, we are all stakeholders. That way, we will find that we shall combat the climate change in the country. All right. That's yeah. a very good place to end this. Thank you very much, Godfrey Onyango.